The next function that we'll look at is the quick line, so the keyword in context. Keyword in context is a useful function for looking at the types of words that will surround a target word, such as prepositions. Those are often difficult for English language learners. So let's take a look um, with our phrases from earlier that we used with the list, go for a run versus take a run. So first we'll look at go for a run and we'll see what types of words um, occur around this phrase. So when we type go for a run, a word or a phrase into the search field, this will be represented here in this middle area. Then we can look for um, words that happen around it. So if we click on these, then we'll expand the number of words that we can see around go for a run. So if we click on keyword in context here, after we put that in, this will give us our phrase and what's happening around it. So this is interesting. We have go, that's a verb, so that's highlighted in pink. Then we have for, which is a preposition, so that'll be highlighted in yellow. Then we have our article in gray, and then we have run, which is a verb or a noun. And the noun is highlighted in blue. If it occurs at a, as a verb, it'll be highlighted in pink. So here we have go for a run after breakfast, go for a run and a swim, go for a run anywhere. So here we can see we have a number of different types of words that follow the phrase go for a run. We can have uh, articles, we can have prepositions, or any number of words. So that's that. If we go back and we change go for a run to take a run, we might see um, some different patterns. So let's say we have take a run and we click keyword in context. And we'll notice here that we have take a run, run occurring as a noun, it's highlighted in blue, and then we have lots of prepositions as they are highlighted in yellow. And we see in particular the preposition at. So take a run at North Carolina. Kerry says he'll take a run at North Carolina. This is probably talking about um, John Kerry and his presidential run. We can go back over here to the context. This is comes from a news program. Um, take a run at Tampa Bay. Take a run at the Whitetails. Take a run at the White House. We can see a lot of this stuff looks like take a run at. We have this, it looks like it's representing um, an effort, like to try to achieve something. So here we have um, take a run at the White House. So this looks like probably George Bush is waiting in the wings, perhaps to take a run at the White House, meaning he will try to become president. So here we can see um, differences between these two phrases by using the keyword in context. And again, keyword in context doesn't need to be used um, with phrases alone. It could be used with um, single words as well. So if we want to see, for example, just run, and let's say we want to see run as it occurs just as a verb, we can put that tag in there and then click on our keyword in context. And we'll see what we get. So here we have run highlighted in pink, just as a verb, and we can see, yep, it's followed by a preposition sometimes, um, it's followed by nouns sometimes, uh, more prepositions, and we can see the types of patterns that occur around run. So a possible activity. One thing you could do is you could have your students work in pairs. You can have them put in um, a phrase like take a run, get rid of the, P the POS tag, and then they can look at the patterns that are happening around take a run. So we saw earlier that take a run seems much more restricted in terms of the type of word that follows it. In particular, um, prepositions and then in particular, just the preposition at. And then your students can look at that and they can take note of the patterns around take a run and then they can compare it with go for a run or any two phrases that you want them to look at and then they can just look through the data and they can discover for themselves what types of patterns mark certain phrases and differentiate them from other phrases or words.